good morning lovely souls happy friday tim not quite in the woods this morning because i appear to have become the proud owner of a midge farm um, i think it's probably just got something to do with the time of year but they're enthusiastic so i've just come out of the woods and um I'm sat up here with my chickens at the moment. <laughs> if one hops up, I'll introduce you. So, Tuesday night, which every day we wake up in the morning, it feels like the previous day is another dimension altogether. Time, frequency, all of the things that we are experiencing seem to be speeding up on a, on a, on a very regular basis to the point where our perception is becoming kind of warped in many ways it's it's our our memories of reality are kind of expand and contract depending on the vibration that we were experiencing during that particular period of time so as i've said previously for good for for, for high frequency immersive beautiful stuff Things just appear to move in a, in, a, in a cloud of sparkly light, whereas if we get involved in the denser frequencies, everything slows down and it becomes a grind. So we're expanding and contracting on a daily basis, very much like our, very much like our personal vibration. Now, during this talk on Tuesday, I was covering a subject which I think is quite applicable for our, for our part in the, for our location in the process we are beings of light okay now you might have heard the term whether you find it a bit cliched or not light worker we are all light workers we work with light light is part of our it's it's the foundation of our universal construction so for say working with the elements of this world as we as we see them fire air earth water you then have the fifth element light light as light would be regarded as the building block the thing that you turn into a a manifestation an intention a solid object or a wave of energy or intention that travels out it's all supported by a foundation of light. So we are light workers in the, in the most practical sense of the word. And our light quotient, our light frequency, where we are on the planet at this time is high, okay? If you look back through my archives of what I've been speaking about over the years, you will see that I have spoken or looked at what triggered the ascension process, okay? So when we moved through the cosmic moment on the 21st of December, 2012, on the 22nd, it was almost like we entered a new room. The light switch had been switched off in the old one. It had been flicked, in, flicked on in the 20 year 4D window. And during that 4D window, all of the frequencies rise on a daily basis. They're doing so more now than ever. So on a daily basis, we wake up, we go about our daily business, everything becomes a process of integrating a higher frequency than we were yesterday, a higher quotient of light. So during the first two years of the, of the 20-year the 20 stretch, 2012 to 2014, an incredible amount happened. And... I think it was July, 20, June, July 2014, every single soul upon this planet received their 12 chakra blueprint. It was became active again, it was returned, depending on whatever way you want to look at it. And so some of us who knew about this, and this was information that was brought through in 2003 by Diana Cooper, about the restoration of the 12 chakra blueprint or gold print as my friend Paul Debris Carey likes to call it. Every single soul received the potential for this, this blueprint on the planet. Whether we acknowledged it or used it or not was a different matter altogether. So here is the point in hand today, okay? There are millions, no, not millions, billions of us now 
walking around on this planet with an ascension light quotient. It has to be that way. It might sound bizarre looking at the way that some people are responding to the world around them at the moment, but the entire process of ascension, the, the where we're going, this very, very fast trajectory, begins when the personal light within our bodies hits 79%. And there's a six percent buffer zone. Okay, now this it might sound a bit mathy and technical or whatever, but this is the way. This is the best way I've found to explain it to myself and to others. It goes from seventy-nine to eighty-five percent, and during that period of time, we go through this flowering process, this transformation, where we begin to engage with our world within a spectrum of higher consciousness. It is inevitable as Thanos would say. The entire process is, and I don't need to sound too absolute here, it's not, a, it's not a negotiable process. What's happening on this world is happening and it's happening for everybody who is involved with it, who's living here, who's signed up for it. And when we begin to move through the initial upsurge in frequency within our body, light quotient frequency, this is where all the changes begin to take place. Okay, so you begin to remove all the old karma, the denser frequencies, the blares begin to come off the third eye chakra, the whole flowering, and I, I like the word flowering because that's what it is. It's like we, we are like buds that have been in, in winter for thousands and thousands of years, and all of a sudden the sunshine comes out and the buds begin the process of flowering, a little bit like spring around me today. But just recently, there's been a vast acceleration in the growth and the flowering process. So everything is beginning to burst open, that spring energy, that burst, it's been brought through by the equinox, by the, the we're, we're slap bang in the middle of eclipse season as well. Now, and this is the point that I was making on Tuesday night to the audience that came along to listen to me, Having a high light quotient doesn't necessarily donate high frequency or even a high level of awareness. It simply means that the body is containing that light and it is going through a process. Our individual state of frequency is based within our awareness of our surroundings, the level of our awakened consciousness and how we're living. Okay, so Although this sounds a little bit on the divisive side, we do live in a realm of polarity, so you have to take into consideration that, that there is a north and a south, a yin and a yang, a light and a dark, whatever you want to call it. So there are people wandering around on this world with a large amount of light in their fields, but they're still unaware of this and they're still not negotiating, they're not, they're not navigating where the the stage of their ascension pathway where they have become aware yet and our personal vibration as i've said many times previously particularly over the last three years our personal vibration is purely our responsibility it's not the responsibility of the angels the unicorns the, the galactics any of the other souls that are helping us it is purely down to us so we are on a journey of raising our vibration in correlation to the quantity of light that we receive. <clears throat> now, this might sound a bit paradoxical, but we do live in a paradoxical period. <laughs> we, can, we can have one set of circumstances going on which are very supportive, but in actual fact, we could be living or immersed in a reality around us that appears to be showing us the complete opposite. The initial response to looking at the world around us would be, oh my God, it's in turmoil. Okay, so it's a little bit like having a bowl of spaghetti that has got very, very stirred up and, and suddenly your job is to straighten out the, the, the strands of spaghetti so that are all pointing in the straight line. It's a little, that's a little bit like what we're doing at the moment. We're, we're refining the energies, we're sorting them out. We're, we're dis discovering what works, what doesn't work, and we're, we're being pretty fastidious in leaving behind the things that are not 
we are able to take with us into the fifth dimensional frequencies. So the light is rising on this planet on a daily basis and this is something that we're all becoming acutely aware of. We've got this incredible photonic radiation coming from the sun, the sun flares and um, I mean if you look at, if you say punch into Google if you're not local to my area or, or even the UK write in Knowlton Church into Google search you'll see the most incredible photographs recently of the northern lights where all of these these sun flares have created such an incredible effect within the with it within the atmosphere of earth the, the northern lights are, which are usually located to the polar north have come all the way down to the uk they were seen in cornwall they were seen in southern england and this this is this is something that i've never seen in my 50 years on this planet now if you look back through say fossil records on 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 this planet you will see that when there has been situations where the sun has done what it is doing at the moment, there's been an incredible upsurge in growth within plants, within trees, within there's been changes within whatever's been going on. So we are receiving that on a physical level. That's a physical light. That's light that we can see that's tangible. But what we can't see is the real triggers to the ascension process, the light that's coming from the light behind the visible sun and we have the seven suns and I'll put some information about the seven suns I've talked about them previously in in the text underneath it and Alice Heath and I are doing a powerful workshop at the end of May which will be working on the light of the seven suns and you'll, you'll be able to see and join up from the text <coughs> that I put underneath so what do we do with this light Okay, what do we do with the quantity of these incredible vibrations that we are receiving at the moment? Because it has a profound effect. It has a profound effect upon our nervous systems. It has a, it's having a profound effect upon our consciousness. And in many cases, the more light we receive, the more we release the denser vibrations. So it has this counteractive effect where Initially, it feels amazing, and and you'll you'll know this if you do meditations or visualizations that call in a lot of light. Whether you work with the light masters in the higher dimensional spaces, when you call this in, there's a burst within the body, and it feels amazing initially. And then, of course, you have to go through the process, depending on how much you've got within your bodies and fields, of releasing the denser energy. So these are the three main ingredients of our ascension process where we are at the moment. We have light, we have awareness, and we have frequency. Now awareness is everything, okay? So awareness, an awareness is something we have become very aware of, particularly over the last three years when everything began to lock down at the beginning of February in 2020. It was, an, it was a real eye-opener for many of us because we could see very clearly exactly what the level of perception and awareness was within the people around us. In fact, you might be listening to this having been woken up by those set of, set of circumstances. All of a sudden, having previously been unaware, you may have become very acutely aware during that period of time because what because of the visibility of the reality of the third dimensional matrix that we were living in it's the most incredible time we're going to look back on this particular period with not so much rose-colored spectacles but with reverence to what we actually learn and the pathway that many of us chose to experience it was absolutely incredible Thank you, Mr. Crow. <laughs> so what's happening to the awareness of people around us at the moment due to this increase in light? The light is forcing the issue, okay? So the more light that is received by this planet, and it is a deliberate process, don't ever for a second think that we are here 
just randomly experiencing what we are experiencing. This is all meticulously planned. So every single thing that is occurring around us at the moment, although it is, it is subject to the law of free will, people have free will on this planet at the moment, and I've, I've spoken about that previously. The, the, the process of applying light to a planet uh, or to a matrix or to a very set frequency and vibration is you can see what's happened it's been happening for the last 10 years so it's going through the process of change but what we've noticed this particular year and especially over the beginning the the, the first four months of 2023 is an incredible increase in light and vibrations it has gone from being something that we are maybe comfortable some days receiving and and very uncomfortable the next two being one consistent full-on vibration that we receive on a daily basis that doesn't ever seem to have it doesn't seem to have any downtime it doesn't seem to relent in any way shape or form and I think by now we're coming to the point where it's we're 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 getting okay with it because we're having to relearn via our awareness and our vibration how to live and thrive in this frequency but for me personally it's been an incredible learning process i'm i'm learning so much from having to make the adjustments to be thriving in this new frequency and it's a little bit at first like being carried by a wave. If any of you have ever been in, in the sea when the waves are big, if you've ever surfed, if you've ever done any kind of any water sports like that, if you are caught in a wake or a current or within a breaking wave, all of a sudden you, you, you are moved forwards incredibly quickly. We're in that period of time where we're just being we've got that rocket propulsion forwards with this in, with this with this tidal flow that isn't relenting and so what choice do we have we learn to surf we learn to swim we learn to move with the current as rapidly as possible because if we don't need i explain more it's it really is the most incredible time to be alive on this planet but even for the most aware of us for even those of us who've been on this pathway and practicing spirituality for years, we are still having to make the same adjustments as everybody else. We're still having to be on the balls of our feet, on our toes all of the time in order to keep up with what is occurring. And I did a live, I did a live Facebook Live with my good friend Mia Kafkios yesterday. And she was saying that every single morning when she wakes up, she calls to uh, her higher self, to her teams of light, to prepare her for this new template that we've got every day. So we wake up every day a new version of ourselves, a higher version of ourselves than we were previously yesterday. We might not feel like it because our vibration is in tune with whatever we are experiencing at the moment, but on a light level, everything has stepped up. And this is the way that this process is going to continue and it is going to accelerate even more so through the remaining part of this year. Now, the best and the most effective ways of dealing with feeling like we're moving very quickly is to call a stop. A stop to anything that is occupying our time, our vibration that is no longer serving us. Now, some of these things might be uncomfortable to let go of. They might be difficult to unweave from the pattern of our lifetimes. But if you look at the advice of various ascended masters of angels of how to live within this frequency, it's all about flow. It's all about being in the flow of energy and letting go of anything that is no longer serving us. And again, that might sound like a spiritual cliche, but it's within our consciousness for a reason. We have to be focused. We have to be diligent and disciplined with what it is that we are, the, the things that we are taking on. If we've got too many balls being juggled in the air, 
simultaneously, we are inevitably going to start dropping them at some point. You can keep it going for a little while, as long as you've got the energy to do so, but then your body will call for you to rest. You will be called to rest, you'll be called to step back, to down tune and just breathe and relax and get in this flow of energy. Grounding is one of the most important things that we can possibly do at this time. We've got the lunar eclipse approaching on the 5th and, and, and all of us are feeling this. We're feeling this as, again, a flex within our reality. When we, I or other souls who are producing content speak of shifting timelines, that's exactly what we're doing. We're moving the consciousness and the actual outcome of our reality to higher potentials by being in this vibration. Light, vibration, awareness. These are the constructions of our reality that are going to make how we live together, how we create, how we manifest, work at the highest level possible. And that's what mastery on earth is all about. That mastering what we are being presented with at the moment. So be prepared for more of this beautiful light to come in from the seven spiritual suns, from all aspects of the universe, from the masters that we're working with, the angels, all of the other souls, and it's going to be catapulting the entire consciousness of this planet into a new vibrational space. And you might already be noticing this from the people around you. I've heard so many stories, beautiful stories, that have come from souls that two, three years ago were feeling a bit despondent about the, the, the outcome of the awakening of the people around them. We felt very alone and we felt very isolated for a long time, but all of a sudden we can now see other people around us just waking up out of nowhere. Expect this, can, expect this to continue because it is going to be a rapid moving one. So from my heart to yours, sending you all lots of love. I'm going to be joined by my good friend David Esri on the 2nd with our trip into the Halls of Amenti. And on the 5th, I'm being, I'm being joined by Paul Debris Carey, my, my ancient friend. And we are going to be working with some extremely powerful subject matter. I'm going to leave the details for these workshops underneath the videos so you can hop on and join if you feel guided to do so. Sending you all lots of love. Bye for now.